doing a review of a game that uh, if you recognize this t-shirt, you're really going to enjoy, namely Tales of Illyria. Now this is a game that's available for the Android platform, so if you have a, a, a tablet like this uh, next to 7 here, you're in good shape. If uh, not, you can pick one of these up. I think this one's a couple hundred dollars, but uh, there's definitely cheaper options available. Anyway, I highly recommend this game. As you'll see, there's a lot to it. So without further ado, here is Tales of Illyria. And here we go with a game called Tales of Illyria by Little Killers. That is a team made up of uh, two guys out of Austin, John Smith and Chad Manichia. John does the lead design graphics and uh, Chad does the programming. So very good team, very good game. Very excited to be showing it to you today. Now hopefully this uh, recording quality will be acceptable to you. My original plan was to stream the video using uh, the Slimport adapter thing. We went through a couple of different versions of that and uh, another device <laughs> just uh, could not do it. I guess there's copy protection built into this unit, maybe the uh, operating system, Jelly Bean, I believe, but just uh, doesn't appear to be any way to do that legally anyway. So anyway, hopefully this will be this will be okay. And plus, you get the benefit of seeing me actually playing it interacting with it and maybe that'll give you a little bit better idea what it's uh, like to play this game now the concept really intrigued me when i heard about it it's a i would describe this as oregon trail meets betrayal at crondor it's lots of great turn-based combat in this uh, there is a, a lot of story and a lot of uh i guess you'd call it a resource management you know trying to get go on these uh, big trips and manage your horses make sure you got enough feed and upgrades and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of uh, management stuff here. A lot of uh, good ethical decisions you get to make along the way. It's just a, a really, really well done game. I have to admit, I haven't played a lot of these uh, Android and iPhone games. You know, I, I've played the ones everybody else has played, but I hadn't really gotten into something deep on one. And this was a, a really pleasant surprise for me. I put many, many hours into this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm really... I think I've probably maybe uh, three quarters of the way done with it. So, I mean, considering this is five dollars, I just don't see how you could go wrong with this. Okay, anyway, you saw the opening story here. Now, I'm going to just kind of mess around with this a little bit to show you some of the options. One thing that's a little bit different that you wouldn't see in most role-playing games is the you can buy horses for your party. These horses, uh, they come in various uh, models, as you can see. Some are faster, some can carry more loads. Uh, so I'm going to start off buying a horse this time, instead of armor <laughs> and better weapons and training. Uh, we'll see how that goes. My thought is maybe I can outrun some of the, the bad guys with this fast horse. All right, always, 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 always go to the tavern. If you play any role-playing games, you know that. It's always a good idea to drink as much ale as possible. Will be important with this game because uh, the taverns will be picking up stories as well as uh, boosting your morale. The only way to get back to full health too is to rest in the inn. I'm gonna check out some provisions here. Make sure we've got the the food. You kind of have to balance the the cost of the food and the weight of the food. You will be able to get more food along the way by hunting. Uh, the water though, you definitely need to get the canteens and fill up at the uh, at the well. You can get water along the way, but it can be contaminated. Just trying to figure out how much uh, wine I can afford. Uh, the wine will be used to boost your morale. You know, it's a very realistic game. You guys are out camping all the time. Uh, a little bottle of wine goes a long way towards uh, keeping the morale high. See all these different shops and things to do here in this first city, but you don't really have enough money to do much yet, so just stick to the basics. I'll try to get on, uh, on the way here so you can see what this is like. Let's go ahead and fill up those canteens. Now, a lot of the times when you go to the different places in a town, you'll also have some uh, randomized encounters. Uh, this time I didn't. Okay, there's the, the blue circles where I'm trying to get to, and the red is the way to get there. Later on, you'll get more choices about which way you like to go. There's my guy. Now, if you click on these birds and deer and hogs and stuff in the that you pass, you might be able to get some food by hunting. Go ahead and saddle up on this nice Mustang. Oh, yeah. Man, I really love the horses. <laughs> yeah, look at that. 
Trying to speed this guy up. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have a hunting skill worth a crap. You oh, what? Oh! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. God, give it some food. Come on. All right. This combat is mostly automated. You do, uh, you can get in there and micromanage it if you want to. You can tell the AI what to do. Ah, that feels better. Look at that, even leveled up. And see, that alone would be enough for me to buy this game. Uh, I still can't hunt. Yeah, it's going to rain. You know, I should uh, mention, too, that uh, this, there's different seasons in the game, and it actually keeps track of, uh, or actually affects how much game that you find out in the when you're traveling. If it's winter time, you don't find nearly as much food. You also need to use those furs to keep uh, warm. Uh, what do we have here? Pack of goblins. They curse loudly. Well, that's quite a pack. See, there's some of the options I've got there. Go for this uh, balanced attack. You got, you can sell uh, so many points you can use to level up your fighting skills. Oh, this guy's really kicking my ass. Look at that. Be kind of nice to have a shield, wouldn't it? <laughs> maybe some, maybe some armor. Uh oh. Okay, well. <laughs> and thus ends the epic journey. I'll go ahead and retry that combat. I don't know if they did this on purpose or, or not, but it seems like whenever you retry the combat, it gets a lot easier. So if you die once, usually if you retry it, it'll, it'll succeed the second time. There, that's better. That's pretty vicious. I'm really starting to think I made a big mistake by buying that damn horse instead of some some armor and better weapons and training. But oh well. Okay, let's go ahead and camp out. See that red bar up there filling back up? That's my, my health. Not really sure what the blue one is. I, I'm pretty sure that's morale. And I think the yellow one's experience, but I just I wasn't able to find out anywhere what that what that was for sure. Okay, so here's one of those random encounters, and there's lots of these, a huge variety of these. You never get bored, because you never really know what to expect. So this guy is just going to teach me a little bit about uh, engineering. Sometimes you'll find guys that will teach you hunting, you know, all the different skills in the game. You've got what, alchemy, hunting, discernment, scouting, uh, engineering. Okay, here we go. It's a little carriage. Let's see what's in the tarp. Oh, a human hand tightly clutching metal bars. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Isn't that uh, movie Willow where they had the Mad Mardigan trapped in the cage? Yep, engineering check fail. <laughs> well, I, you know, I got used to playing with my really advanced party. It's kind of a shock to go back and be failing at almost every day. <laughs> Look at that, even broke my ankle. But it looks like we've got a woman here. Extend a hand to her. Huh. Maybe she'll be grateful for my rescue. You play a pretty nice guy. You can role play this guy as kind of a jerk if you want to. There's a also what do they call that? The karma system. You can kind of be a you know a dirty guy if you want to. Mean, aggressive, ruthless. Or you can play nice, goody two shoes type of character. Offer her some comfort. It's good old southern comfort. Oh, party karma increased. Morale increased. Okay. Oh, look at that. Now I got me a party member, a healer. She's going to come in real handy. Go ahead and check out the party here. Look at her uh, stats. Later on in the game, I got uh, five other people to join me. I'm not really sure what the, the limit is on that. Definitely makes it easier once you get some help. You don't have a lot of stats to worry about, just strength, agility, and intellect. You probably don't want to have any any score too low in those. I think uh, the strength is where you get your hit points and resistance to disease as well as damage. Yep, strength, agility, and intellect, so those are my stats I can raise. Since this guy hopefully will be wielding an axe eventually, go ahead and start pumping up his strength. Agility is going to be really key too because you can see there it calculates the uh, hit rolls. 
And you tend to miss a lot in this game if you have a sucky agility, so I think it's worth putting some points into that as well. Those are my skills. You see, if I wanted to, I could make this guy into an archer. I'll just stick him on the, the front line there. Got my... You can adjust the ranks there. Look at the quest log, map. I had to slow it down because uh, she doesn't have a horse, so she's having a hard time, I think, keeping up with my Mustang. Now, what do we have here? Poisoned arrow buries itself into your arm. Uh-oh. Infected wound. <laughs> this is a, probably not going to go very well. I'm really, really thinking now I shouldn't have gotten that Mustang. Oh, well. Yeah, these guys are just... Wow. I don't know if my healer will get a chance to heal me before it's too late. Oh, there we go. Oh, I think it's going to be a case of too little too... Oh, I don't know. I almost got him. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. See, I'm not... <laughs> you see how he's dodging. You get that agility score up. Come on. Okay. Oh. Wow. Okay, well, I guess uh, I'm still in the game as long as she's alive. Oh, yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Put a buff on yourself. <laughs> that was smart. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Bye-bye. I don't know, maybe... Maybe she'll, uh... You know, I'd laugh if she actually, uh... Kicked this guy's butt. No, it's, it's over. Huh? I don't know. She's... Feisty, isn't she? <laughs> oh, that lightning's just not doing the damage. Wow. Oh, this is going to be close. I like a battle like this that gets really, uh... Oh, this is just... Oh, okay, that's it. And I thought she had it there for a second. All right, let's hit the magic retry button. And these guys are probably thinking, you know, I bet some dumbass is going to buy a, a Mustang instead of armor. <laughs> go ahead and uh, retries that battle a few times, so just go ahead and let, let him win. Yeah, look at it. I guess it could just be random luck playing into this. This really seemed to get some kind of boost when you come back. All right, he's down now. And once I get up close to this archer, I'll be able to harass him. See, harassed. I think he, uh, basically that means he's gonna miss a lot more, not do as much damage. Alright, should have this in the, in hand now. Okay, excellent. Got some experience, gold, water, wine, uh, looks like a couple of dark masks there. Go ahead and take a look at those. Dark mask, rating 1, leather 5%, claw 7%, so these basically suck. I guess they're better than nothing, though. It's a little bit of a pain uh, putting on your gear. You know, I wish they had a little bit nicer way to do this. It's a lot of clicking. All right, he's looking nice. Kind of like, uh, uh, who's that guy from the Ninja Turtles with the, uh, what was this, Scorpion? Or, no, uh, Shredder. Yeah, looking like Shredder there. Go ahead and level her up. Pump up a little uh, intellect. I think she'll do more damage with that lightning and heal better, too. So that might actually be a pretty significant improvement there. That, that's cool. Okay, these guys are pretty dinged up, so I need to camp out. Let's see, a little more story there. A shredded leaflet. So I hit this button, and then I can camp again. An infected wound. I think the only way to get rid of that is to go to the chapel. Which, that kind of sucks, because that's probably going to take all the all the money that I earned. Ah, oh, their party morale increased. At least that sprained ankle went away. See on my health bar, there's green. Uh-oh. <laughs> These are dire wolves. Dire wolves foaming at the mouth. That's the worst kind of dire wolf right there. You know, there is kind of a Game of Thrones-like uh, influence. Seems like it to me. A lot of uh, politicking here and backstabbing. Political machinations. Oh, man. Yeah, I think that uh, infected wound didn't do me any favors there. Looks like I'm about to be Kibbles. Yeah, she's hitting him with that lightning. You uh, upgrade that a bit and it actually can hit multiple targets, which is pretty cool. 
Maybe another close one. I think she's pretty much uh, toast, though. Oh, oh well, time to hit the magic retry combat. <laughs> It'll all be worth it, though. I mean, eventually I'll get the armor and weapons, and I think getting that horse will turn out to be a good investment. Definitely make my traps a lot faster. Okay, here we go. Nice uh, thing about killing these sorts of creatures is that you get furs. You can sell those furs for quite a bit of cash. Also get food. You really have to watch the food. You don't want to run out of that. It's uh, it's pretty bad. But you pretty much have to reload if you run out of food and water. Of course, another big advantage of having this horse is uh, you can get there faster. You don't have to use as much food and water. You don't have to carry as much. One of your horses suddenly stumbles and falls to the ground. Okay, well, I guess that's just one of the hazards of the of traveling, you know, you might lose a valued companion, a Mustang that I was really attached to. Okay, moving on. Uh, taking a look here at the stats again. Let's see, a few bodies lying dead by the road. They look to be victims of a bandit assault. Would you like to spend the day burying them? Yeah, sure, why not? Uh oh. Well, there'll be a little uh, romance here. You can probably tell from these uh, interactions just how much detail, how much story these guys produce for this game. It includes uh, something they call the Codex, which is about a, I think it's actually over a hundred pages of backstory on this game, filling you in on the, the history of the land. The different political factions at play here, the different organizations. I mean, it's just really interesting stuff. They really, really did their homework. You know, again, it does really remind me of uh, George R. R. Martin's uh, Game of Thrones series. I mean, there's no... <laughs> at least I didn't see any of the uh, raunchier parts of that game here. I guess there's the brothels, but... Um, there's just a lot of stuff going on here. You definitely... If you're the type of player that just likes to skip all the text, not read any of it, you probably won't get as much out of this game. I mean, it really pays uh, to read that stuff and and keep it in mind. Hell, he might even take notes as you go along. It's a really sophisticated narrative. All right, made it to this town, or it looks like a village actually. Go to the chapel, get that uh, infected wound taken care of. See how much that's going to cost. I can try to get some money by selling the any furs and extra food I have. And like I said before, if you pump up that hunting skill a lot, you kill a lot more game and make money that way. Plus, you don't have to waste your money buying food and get really expensive. Let's see if I got anything to sell. You definitely don't want to sell the furs, though, if it's getting close to winter time, because then your people will start to freeze. I guess they kind of wear a fur for a while. It wears out. They put a new one on. I think that's how that works. They're basically expendable resources. See if I can afford any leather armor, perhaps. Got to get something on this guy. He is just uh, not cutting it in combat. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like there's just not enough gold. To, <laughs> I guess I can get him a studded collar. Yeah, that's going to help. Well, if you don't learn anything else from this video, I think you will have learned uh, it's probably better off not buying a Mustang. Go ahead and get yourself some decent armor and weapons. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and load up my other other save game so you can see what some of the later game looks like. You know, another thing this game does well, and I'm sure this is by design, is it's very easy to just play for a few minutes if you want. You can, uh, at least if you put it on casual mode, you can save it pretty much anywhere. It's kind of important in a portable device. You know, you might just want to play 15 minutes here and there. It's very easy to do that with this game. So you can see here I've got a full six party members, and they're all on horses. You can also get them better saddles, and that'll let you uh, go faster. I guess the cheap-ass saddles tend to <laughs> rub their butts raw or something. They 
start complaining. Let's see, a shuffling sound off in the distance. Oh, there comes that arrow again. Man, what is it with this with me and uh, getting hit with arrows? Uh, what, so these two guys, I guess, or these two groups are going to fight each other <laughs> instead of me. <laughs> you ruined our arrow strike. No, it was you who ruined our dart attack. Oh, well. We're all supposed to stop the Parasite Lord. Yeah, I just I love the writing in this game. There's a lot of humor here. There's a lot of good uh, vignettes, too. There's even some dungeons you can find and sort of a little uh, mini dungeon. A couple different levels and explore those. They really did a good job making this Illyria place feel realistic and worth exploring. Uh, worth learning more about. <laughs> They're passing around the hard tack. <laughs> oh, it's going to be entertaining to watch these groups uh, battle it out. Uh, I guess they won, so they get the honor of facing my guys. Oh, damn it! All right, here we go. Six on two. <clears throat> I see these guys have a lot more spells and abilities. Sort of buffing everybody up. And like I said, if you go into the AI options, you can turn off spells if you don't want them to, to use it. I kind of went back and forth with giving them bows in the back. I notice if you give somebody a bow, they tend to use that a lot more than their spells. Which, uh, that just doesn't make sense when you, <laughs> you got those AOE lightning strikes. I want her doing that. Not just uh, missing somebody with an arrow. Also, there's a lot of cool little uh, dots and, and buffs, debuffs. I mean, this is a lot more complicated than you might think. Uh, he keeps missing with this. Got this nice mace. Uh, the guy, one of my guys, has a magical sword that'll stick a debuff on on him. You know, sometimes if you hit them hard enough, they get a wound that bleeds out for a while. I got water, wine, leather, chain. That's a nice little haul there. I think they also did a good job with the duration of the battles. They don't, they're not over too quick and they're not, they don't take too long. They're just about right. Just taking a look here at my, see what my people have on if this is an upgrade. Yep, looks like it is an upgrade. I haven't been able to find any disadvantage to wearing the heavier armor other than the, the weight might uh, slow you down or something, make the spells, uh, you know, have some kind of effect on spell casting, I'm not sure, but I'm going to go ahead and put everybody in the, the heaviest stuff I can. I'm going to skip forward a bit and show you the next town. There's a huge map, lots of different places to go, and the villages and castles have different kinds of buildings. Here's the brothel. Let's see, treat a party member to an evening of pleasure, learn the art of persuasion from the madame. 135 gold to learn that. Yeah, why don't we send somebody in? I haven't actually done this before. I <laughs> don't know. Hope it doesn't uh, get too x rated here. Let's see. Private room. 50 gold. Yeah, his morale has increased. Uh, I guess there's no <laughs> series of cutscenes there. Not uh, too bad. I wonder if you get a sexually transmitted diseases. Or, that'd be kind of fun. Sir John has painful urination. All right, let's see. So you can see all the different ways I can learn, skill up my fighters. There's also a mage one for spells. Lots of a uh, fine detail here that's you know it's well balanced too. I wasn't ever able to find a way. There might be some way to set up your characters where they're overpowered, but I never, at least uh, when I've been playing this, it always feels pretty evenly matched. A lot of the battles are, you know, you do have to redo them a couple times, but I don't really mind that. I don't like a game that I can just walk through without being challenged. Definitely got the difficulty right here, as far as I'm concerned. Ah, beggar. You know, what do you do when somebody asks you for money? Some beggar. Seems like this game uh, rewards you for giving them the gold. Okay, so I gotta try to blow up a bridge. I don't wanna give away too much of the plot here, so I'll just go ahead and end it here. I think you've seen more than enough, though, to make a judgment if this is a game you wanna check out. 
I really strongly recommend this. It's uh, definitely the most fun thing, uh, fun game I've played on my uh, tablet so far. It's kind of nice. I mean, this this tablet I got here, I think, is uh, two hundred dollars or so. It's nice to be able to kick back on the couch and play something, not have to be in front of your desktop all day. You want to do a little RPGing on the road at your office or whatever? You could take this with you. Last time I checked, this was only five dollars on the Google Play Store. Put a link to it for you. And there you have it, Tales of Illyria. Highly recommended. Lots of fun, especially for fans of. Oregon Trail, Betrayal and Crondor, and just good old turn-based role-playing games. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week with a new interview series. I'm going to keep a surprise as to who this is, but if you're a fan of those good old point-and-click adventure games, you definitely don't want to miss this one. As always, I want to thank you very, very much if you have supported this show. It really means a lot to me, guys. If you would like to drop a dollar or two into the old bard hat, just go to mattchat.us. It's my new website. And by the way, if you haven't seen this website, uh, please, I want to personally invite you to come check it out. I have a great uh, forum, uh, lots of blog posts there, audio podcasts, uh, things that are and some things that aren't available on YouTube. So. Uh, be my guest. You, easy to create an account there and also uh, to uh, donate to the show. So thank you very much. Uh, some other news. Uh, I just got a email from the producer of our film Gameplay, the uh, story of video games, uh, the story of the video game revolution. Apparently this, you know, this has been on, uh, he's been working on it all this time. I had no idea. I thought it was kind of, uh, had gone into the defunct file, but apparently it's actually just about finished. It uh, should be out by December. So really excited about that. I've uh, seen the, uh, I think they call it the pre-mix, and it just looks really awesome. And I think you guys are just going to be blown away by this thing. I'll try to keep you posted about that on the uh, matchat.us site as uh, well as here. All right, what about that ale of the week? Um, now this week I have the, the other beer, uh, the other ale from uh, Christian. If you uh, missed the story on these, uh, go back and watch the uh, previous episode. He talks at great length about the story of where these uh, beers come from. Uh, the other one was the IPA, and this is uh, apparently just the regular Belgian ale. I think that's what Belgisk or Belgisk ale means. Uh, so anyway, uh, it says 6% alcohol by volume there, so not, not bad. Anyway, let's get this open and see if it's as good as that last one was. All right, so I've been uh, sniffing this really sexy blonde uh, ale, and I just got to say, I mean, this just has a lovely, lovely aroma on it. Very citrusy, almost like a, you know, like a basket full of uh, really fresh lemons. I just get a very nice citrusy, uh, citrusy uplifting kind of a, a aroma from this. Also, is a, I don't know if you noticed that picture of the glass, but there's a lot of bubble action in this. So it's quite a vibrant ale just by looking at it. You can tell there's going to be uh, quite a bit going on uh, to the palate here. Anyway, here's that to you, Christian. Uh, thank you very, very much for these ales. It's been a real pleasure. Anyway, let's give it a taste. Oh, oh that's to get. Uh, definitely tasting that sort of, I don't know what else to call it, but that sort of Belgian y uh, taste, if you get with these Belgian uh, Abbey ales. It's kind of a vaguely sort of peachy, a um, little bit of kind of a cherry uh, flavor to it. Um, a little bit of hoppiness, but it's very, very sweet, uh, almost kind of like a, a mead. It almost tastes like honey from this. Let me give another taste. Yeah, very, this is very, very good. And I like the fact that there's just a, a little bit of bitterness there, uh, just to kind of uh, make it a little bit more interesting to taste this. Um, definitely very high quality stuff. Uh, very refreshing, very light uh, for a Belgian ale. You know, some of these can have uh, upwards of 10 to 15 percent alcohol. Uh, but anyway, I really, really enjoy this. I guess given the choice between this and the IPA, uh, you know, it's, it's very, very tough to call to call that one. Uh, so I'm just going to have to go with a, a five out of five on this one too. A very, very fine ale. I highly recommend this. I don't know uh, who you'd have to kill to get one. Uh, maybe make uh, friends with. Christian, like I did. Maybe he will uh, send you some. Anyway, thanks again. It's been a lot of fun. All right, uh, let's wrap this up with a quotation. And uh, I found a really good poem about ale. 
uh, by none other than uh, one of my favorite poets, Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, anyway, it goes something like this. Fill with mingled cream and amber, I will drain that glass again. Such hilarious visions clamber through the chambers of my brain. Quantus thoughts, queerest fantasies, come to life and fade away. What care I how time advances? I am drinking ale today. See you guys next week. You people amaze me. You really amaze me. Your quality control people, they just have bats in the belfry. Bought this Game Boy yesterday, took it home, nothing. Absolutely nothing. No picture. I'm pretty sure it's the EEPROM, so if you just want to take a look at that, I'd fix it myself, but I don't really have the tools, so I'll take my money back if you... I'm sorry you had a problem. There's nothing at all, huh? Nope. Well, let's see. EEPROM.